Hello and welcome to the Duff Money Personal Finance and Investing Channel. Before we get into it, I'd just like to say that this is not financial advice. This is information only. This is video two and we'll be looking at reflecting on your relationship with money. If you haven't watched video one, I would encourage you to go back and watch video one. Gives you a little bit of background about Duff Money and why I'm doing this YouTube channel. It also goes over the importance of personal finance and investing. To be honest, I've been rubbish at personal finance and investing, especially between 2008 and 2018, when I made a lot of bad investing decisions, was anxious over money. It wasn't good. And this is exactly what I want anyone watching this video to avoid. I want you to have a good relationship with money, not like me in the past. So yeah, go back, watch video one, and then you can start from there. So again, this is video two, where we will be looking at reflecting on your relationship with money. For me, my earliest memories of money was growing up on a council estate and there was a scarcity of money. We didn't really have much money. I was brought up by my parents in a really good way. I had a really good upbringing, but we didn't have much money like I would imagine is the case for most people who live on a council estate. And growing up, I always had a little thing for money. I thought I was a kid, I always wanted the latest football magazine, the latest football boots, whatever it was. And having a thing for money led to washing cars in the summer, to earn a bit of extra pocket money, if you like. A few years later, this led to a paper round, working in a fruit and veg shop, my great auntie's fruit and veg shop, for about £2.50 an hour, if not less. Um, this led to gardening and any other odd job, odd job I could get. And this was all the way up to deciding to get a career. And again, when I was thinking about a career, it was about money. It was about getting a trade to earn as much money as possible. Because like I say, I had a little thing for money. So at 17, I ended up going in the RAF and I earned good money. And this was for five years. I was quite happy with my financial situation. It used to, get, to be honest, it got spent on nights out, holidays, first few cars, what? It, but it, I did buy my first house at nineteen, so I did buy an asset, which was a good thing. So got good money, earned good money in the RAF, and then five years later, I left the RAF. And this was my first real taste of being anxious over money because I was leaving to be a contractor, electrical contractor with no guaranteed income. And I think I was anxious because I didn't have that guaranteed RAF in income coming in. So when I was first starting out as a contractor, I wasn't didn't have that much money, it was decent enough. And this led to side hustles, a few little side hustles like selling aloe vera products to family and friends, one of the most embarrassing nights of my life. Um, it also led to a little eBay business where I was trying to sell toys that, that didn't go too well and a few others. So, but thankfully, the side hustles didn't quite work and this was like 2006, 2007 sort of time. Thankfully, my contracting picked up and I started to earn good money, especially when I was working offshore in 2010, 2011. Got a few good career breaks, started to earn good money, um, especially between 2012 and 2016. So saved quite a lot of money. But in this time, I, I earned good money, but spent good money, which is no good for personal finance. The good, a uh, good way of looking at personal finance is to spend less than you earn and invest the rest, which I didn't do in this time. And in 2016, when my income dropped significantly because of market conditions, this meant my savings start to drop significantly. And this led to more anxiety. I've 
always been anxious over money, to be honest, looking back. Like say, if I was contracting, I was out of work for a few weeks, this would lead to anxiety. Again, like I say, when my savings dropped after 2016, this led to anxiety. And this went on up until 2000, late 2018. So between 2016 and 2019, I was chasing money up and down the UK, again offshore, and in poor conditions abroad. So I had anxiety and I was chasing money, which is no good. At the end of 2018, I got to a point where I'd had enough. I'd had enough of being anxious about money. I'd had enough about being miserable and mourning to my wife and anyone else who would listen. So I decided to learn about money. I decided to get some much needed financial literacy. And this really started properly at the start of 2019. I managed to get on top of my personal finances. I built a cash buffer of six months living expenses and this really calmed me down and since mid 2019 I've really been investing invest in the stock market via index funds index investing with Vanguard I've started to invest in property again and I've also started to invest in crypto and this is my long-term strategy long-term buy and hold with property index investing and also crypto so yeah that's pretty much me looking back on my relationship with money a little timeline if you like now if you are interested in personal finance and investing and want to get some early financial independence i would look at doing a timeline for yourself so just like this so there's my little timeline so this is the growing up in a council estate scarcity of money we didn't have much money like i say um early memories of not having money i, I can all also remember people saying things like money is the root of all evil um money's bad people with money is bad and it really isn't for me money isn't bad or good money is an exchange of value it is a unit of measure and it is a store of wealth. So yeah, continuing with my relationship with money. Obviously, I had a thing for money. Like I said, I wanted more money. Led to fewer jobs as I was growing up. Led to me joining the REF and wanting to trade and wanting to earn more money, but wanting to earn good money. Um, left the REF after five years. And this led to anxiety, worried about money. And I think that anxiety that I've always had with money from being a kid right until my mid thirties is probably because of growing up on a council estate, partly growing up in a council estate with not having much money growing up. But it was also because I was never taught about money. Us in the, like people in the UK are not taught about money and it's a failing in the school system. So this is just a quick summary of my relationship with money. The next video, video three, we're gonna be looking at really understanding your relationship with money. If you like the content of this YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. And if you, as well, you can also go to duffmoneylimited.co.uk for our weekly posts and podcasts.